Okay, so, all right, beautiful. Is We're recording? Yes, ma'am. All right, we're going to start. <laughs> all right, hey, y'all. I'm Don Fowler. I'm a mother and educator, the owner and creator of August Jones Essentials, where we offer wellness shots and detoxes. And I'm the host of this here podcast, For the Record Podcast, where we have the deep, therapeutic, uncomfortable, vulnerable, heavy, authentic, and necessary conversations. And today we will be doing that. This is episode 44, and we're calling it Dare... Daring to dream. Um, and I have two people here who are daring to dream, and I love that so much. And we're going to have conversations about everything that, that is going on in their life um, and what that looks like, daring to dream what it looks like. Um, so I have uh, Randolph Samuel here. Hey, what's up, what's up, what's up? I'm so happy <laughs> to have you here. I'm glad to be here, man. You hit me up, I'm like, yes. <laughs> you're gassing it <laughs> no, I was really like that though. I was like Bet. no I'm so happy that you're here yeah. me and Randolph are from the same place and he is now a big actor in LA okay he yeah. is, he's doing it big okay oh, okay talk to me talk to me <laughs> <laughs> introduce yourself and tell him like so what you got going on um, so my name is Randolph Samuel aka Trey yeah. if you're from you know Glassboro area everybody knows me like that but um, I'm an actor teacher producer um, and that's, you know, that's my field. I've right now is mostly commercials, but I have a few films that are doing really well that soon people will see. Yeah, yeah. So I'm excited for that too, that I actually wrote and, um, starred in. So they have some awards attached to them. So I'm excited for I love the that. world to see that wow. aspect of me. Yes. You know? <laughs> All good things. No, that's beautiful. Yeah. I'm very happy to have you here. Of course, I love to see people that where I'm from, like doing big things. Yeah, yeah. And you're part. one of those people, so I'm happy that you're here. I love to have all of my LA people come, uh -huh. you know, home and like, you know. Uh, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we have the beautiful Angel. What's up, baby? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, uh, introduce yourself. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Angel. I'm from Philadelphia. I honestly did not prepare anything, so um, I it's guess okay. I'll just speak a little bit about myself. Yeah, no, it's all good. I'm an actress, you know, model, dancer, talent, um, you know, all of the above, all the things. Yes. Creative. You, you <laughs> are. You Actually, are. just recently enrolled, enrolled in a sales course, so I'm excited to get more into sales and marketing and business in the future. So I love that. Oh, God. Hey. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes. Here. No, thank you so much for coming. I love that you were two new people on the couch, but I would love to have you guys back. Um, you know, come back for sure. Like okay. you're, you guys would be, are both great for, for the record. Um, so we're talking daring to dream. Like once I had these two people coming here, I knew that that was just like the obvious choice for me because, um, me myself, obviously I'm a podcaster. I'm also an educator, but I'm always trying to figure out what life is supposed to look like. Like, you know, like what I want my life to look like, you know, what society thinks my life should look like and how that's influencing the decisions that I'm making for life. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, myself, I'm daring to dream, even doing this podcast. And, yes. you know, and it's just like, it can be difficult because sometimes it's just like things don't look like the traditional lifestyles of other right. people. Mm -hmm. And you could feel judged and you could judge yourself for that sometimes. And I want to have a conversation about it. So sound good to you guys? Oh, that yes. sounds great. I love that topic. Sounds Very great. relatable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I relate to it. And I know you guys do. All right. Feel it. Yeah. <laughs> Felt it, <laughs> right? <laughs> in my soul <laughs> yes all right so let's talk about this um when did you first know that you wanted to be an actor i'll ask you first if i slip up and call him trey y'all just bear <laughs> bear with me but i'm gonna try to be good about calling him randolph um yeah. randolph how did you first know you want to <laughs> it just feels so weird right, right. it really does i'm sorry oh man so when i first knew I, I have like two moments and i'm not sure like obviously when i was younger i felt like i wanted to be on the big screen yeah but i wasn't sure that it was acting yeah. I just knew like I played sports and I'm like well I want to be on TV yeah but um there was a time when I was in college and I was playing college basketball and uh, my college coach was telling me that um I was an unrecruited walk-on and my coach was telling me that in order for me to really get the playing time that I wanted you know he couldn't give that to me because he had recruits from a specific area yeah he didn't want to lose them yeah. And then that made me realize I didn't do the politics thing right. Yeah. Mm. And I went back to my dorm and was having like a moment. And I was like, yo, this is crazy. Like, what's going on? And the the moment that what helped ease that moment was like playing the piano. And I was doing like impressions. Like I was doing like Denzel impressions and I was watching Train a Day. And then I was like, I'm going to try this out. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then from there, 
I started getting the yeses that I wasn't getting necessarily in sports. Mm. And it was like, oh, this is kind of like, even though there was a lot of no's, yeah. but it was like, yes, yes, yes. And I was like, oh, these are affirmations. There was an ease to it. There was a joy to it. Mm -hmm. Even the no's didn't hurt as bad. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I'm here. Okay. You, uh, yeah, like, I'm, you got me. This is what I'm called to be doing. Yeah, Oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah. yeah. How about you, yes. Angel? And, you know, I, I wanted to chime in. What I liked is that you looked inward. Yeah. 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 Like, you know, the politics thing, I feel like sometimes it takes for us to be out there and then experience something not work out to then look inward and then figure out that it's something that's in us all along. Yeah. Right, right. So I love that's that real. Part of yeah. Your story. Yeah, yeah, thank you. That's real. Yeah, no, that was beautiful. That. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was, I was, I was having a <laughs> moment. <laughs> Of course, the actor episode would get emotional. Oh. <laughs> right, <laughs> my makeup on for this. I know. <laughs> How about you, Angel? When did you know that you wanted to be an actor? You know, I feel like it wasn't until recently that I discovered, you know, acting in the past few years. But I feel like in my heart, ever since I was younger and maybe four or five years old, I always loved performing. Mm -hmm. I always loved being in front of people. You know, I don't think I realized at that young of an age that, acting was a thing or that that was something that I wanted to do but I always would you know be that kid that would stand in the middle of the living room and say watch me dance watch me sing watch me perform and yeah. I just love doing that yeah and um <clears throat> as I got older I started you know getting into dance classes and cheerleading and performing and just found myself in front in, in front of my calling anyway mm -hmm. um yeah, through through different opportunities like in commercial and, and TV. And then with that happening, I realized I might as well, you know, pursue this mm -hmm. <laughs> a Next. little bit more and a little <laughs> and with intent. So, you know, that's what I've been doing the, the past few years. And it's it's interesting because when I first signed up, you know, there's two sides to acting. There's like the vanity part mm -hmm. and then there's the craft. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's so many people that care about the vanity. They want to be on the big screen. They want to be on a movie. They want to be a star. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you sign up for it and then you realize it's a lot of hard work. Yeah. <laughs> and what? It changes your life in yeah. so many different ways. And you don't realize that, you know, it's going to knock you off your feet a hundred times and that you're going to change and you won't even be the same person that cares about vanity anymore. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of like an interesting realization mm. <laughs> throughout the, the process. Real. But, you know, as I started to learn more and more about the art, I realized that it, it's something that I love. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it helped me understand myself more and other people. Yeah. And just have better quality experiences yeah. with people and in life. That's so super interesting. Um, I love that. Yeah, no, because I was thinking like. I like this right here. Yeah, no, <laughs> that I was thinking like anything that we do, right? Eventually, if we're taking it seriously, the fun's going to come out of it. You know what I mean? And right. acting is such like a glamorous thing that you could go into it looking at it that way, right? Like mm -hmm. with the glam in mind, but you don't realize like once you start that hard work, if you're not called to be there, it's going to be really, <laughs> it's not going to be it's sustainable. Yeah. 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 So yeah, yeah, I totally understand that. I I relate in the way that teaching is a calling for me mm -hmm. everyone every time I tell somebody I'm a second grade teacher they're like girl how how you do that <laughs> right. and it's like trust me if I wasn't called to be here I, I couldn't do it yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like for sure second grade is heavy yeah <laughs> second grade in Camden and or North Philly like mm -hmm. it's like it's a lot you know but it's like really a calling on my life and that is why I'm there like I'm not there for any other reason a lot of people don't work jobs that they're called to do you know yeah. what I mean mm -hmm. like yeah. most people I feel like are not doing that they're just working at a job that's going to give them what they need so true you know mm -hmm. so it's just like being called to do something and deciding that that's what you're going to do regardless of what that looks like is I think really just like a that's an alternative route you know most yeah. people just don't do that yes so I love that that's your calling. Yeah, mm -hmm. me too, actually. And yeah. I love kids, too. So I feel like that's something we have in common. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, no, I love kids. I really do. Like, yeah, I love kids. They're just, I, humans get on my nerves, but kids. <laughs> <laughs> humans as a whole. <laughs> humans as a whole. Kids are my favorite humans. <laughs> you know, so funny. They're, They're funny honest. and pure. Right. You know, like. Active. Yeah. Stop the cow. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. All right, so. I want to know what your families think about your career paths. Um, they're 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 really oh supportive. God. They're really supportive. Um, which is interesting. I I think I'm extremely blessed to be a part of the family yeah. that I'm actually a part of. 
That's beautiful. Because Aww. they they <laughs> that's really beautiful. <laughs> they they really come together and rally around you regardless of. Yeah. Now they have their opinion. Mm -hmm. They gonna say what they gonna say, mm -hmm. but they really come together. And I feel like you know my family out of concern they say things of like well maybe you should, uh, well they used to more often but get this type of job or have mm -hmm. something that is more consistent or anything in that in that route. But as um, I was more resilient mm -hmm. in the journey mm -hmm. and as I kept having breakthroughs and, uh, you know, they started seeing me on TV and they started seeing mm -hmm. certain things. Like my father flew out to Colorado mm -hmm. when I had a movie premiere in Colorado. Oh. And oh. He flew out to, to like see it. He seen me win awards and he yeah. seen like what I wrote and what I performed in with the team that, you know, helped get yeah. it to light. Mm -hmm. And then those things, those were like, nah yo you gotta keep going like yeah. i don't care what it is you about to get us all out like yeah, yeah. you know so it's like you yes. got to keep going and i'm happy for you and i'm proud of you which is very i think ironic to or not ironic but different to this type of journey yeah because a lot of times i hear the stories of opposites mm -hmm. and i'm like mm -hmm. i feel and i can relate or i can empathize mm -hmm. but i can't necessarily relate to the fact that like my mom and my dad and my sisters were like what are you it that you're trying to do i produced a film and my sister did the food. Mm. <laughs> my mom, my um, my other sister did the set design. Mm. Courtney, she did the set wow. design. Oh, Shantae did the food. Um, my mom, uh, she showed up and helped organize everything. My dad was like a PA, mm. and he just was carrying stuff. I'm like, they all showed up, mm. and I was oh, like, that's God. rare, in, especially, and I feel like in my in like our community. Yeah, I'm like, yo, they all <laughs> showed up yeah. and was like, what is it that you got to do? And I was like, yo, I'm just blessed to be in that. That's type of space a big blessing yeah 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 no that's beautiful how about you angel um okay well, <laughs> I love, that story is amazing no it is honestly at no. my school i see so many people work on like films first of all it's super commendable to write and produce and create your own thing thank yeah you, thank you thank you you know i you know i feel like even the thought of writing alone scares me so mm. to put it down on paper and, and have everybody come together and bring it to life is so cool yeah Thank no you. it is um where do i start my family yeah so my family is supportive i come from a you know musical creative artist kind of a background as well okay um my mom and uncle were music producers managers executives so i feel like they have you know a history of belief and going outside of the traditional path even though they both went to college and have their you know business degrees they've also you know take taken chances on themselves to go the alternative route for music so I think that I'm grateful that they understand it and yeah. they appreciate it and they know it's something I like and they know it's something that I'm passionate in and they're they're very supportive um to that regard which I'm also grateful for because I know that there are a lot of families that want their kids to stay in their career and their yeah. nine mm -hmm. to five in yeah. their profession that they can, you know, feel like they brag about or whatever the case may be. And, you know, it's nice to have yeah. kids that are a okay with you doing mm -hmm. what yeah. means something to you because it, it is a risk. Yeah. It is a chance. It is an alternative route. I can't tell you how many times, you know, you, I go out into public. It's it's interesting when people ask me, like, what I do. Sometimes I don't really know what to say yeah. <laughs> or where to start yeah. because there's different things, right? I'm not going to be like, hello, I'm an actor, I'm a dancer, I'm, I've done, <laughs> right. I'm, I've recruited, you know, I've done modeling. Like, yeah. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, so yeah. I'm like, ah, where do, where do I start with this? So I feel like sometimes when you have those conversations, you can almost feel the um, like judgment from yeah. people, mm -hmm. especially if you just flat out say, oh, you're an actress. Mm -hmm. Most, you know, people that work a normal nine to five, they're just going to look at you and they'll say, well, I don't like, well, they don't say this, but mm -hmm. you know that they're thinking this. If you're, if you're a good actress, you know what they're thinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And they're thinking, um, you know, I've never seen you on a, on a big That's movie yeah. Yeah. or I've never seen you, you know, in the box office. So they're assuming that means you're not an actress yeah. or an yeah. actor, but they don't realize that you know being an actor and actress is being an artist yeah mm -hmm. and that it's an art form yeah and that it doesn't really matter who has seen you or who has known you right it's how you know committed and dedicated you are to the art right and how many artists out there that people never heard of yet? exactly that doesn't mean that they're not an artist <laughs> and, and a great artist too <laughs> right yeah exactly yeah no absolutely <laughs> yeah no that's that's really important that my next um question we'll go into that a little bit but that's so important because it there's such validation that we 
defined and being able to just like say that we are something that's like considered a good thing you yeah. know what i mean yeah. like yeah. consider the like we just want to be able to say i'm a doctor i'm a lawyer i'm a teacher mm -hmm. i'm a you know what something, i'm saying yeah. like i'm yeah. something One that's thing. gonna significance to it like and you know what's wait. so crazy like sh quick i'll be quick with this like little story but i um remember i went to school for broadcast journalism and i remember telling my dad i'm going to school for broadcast journalism he was like why you don't, why don't you be a nurse Try to be a nurse, right? They make money. It's stable. It's this, that, and the other. And right. I'm just like, whatever, Dad. I was young at the time, but I was offended, but I was, like, young. Mm -hmm. So I, did, I kept on, like, living life. I went to school for broadcast journalism. Then I became a mortgage loan officer or whatever. I've, like, had multiple jobs and careers or okay, whatever. Okay, I didn't know all of this. Yeah, like, I've been <laughs> a lot of things. <laughs> I've been to, like, three different colleges, whatever. So so it's funny because then I, um, when I was, like, a mortgage loan officer, one of my cousins was like, why don't you try to be a nurse? Like, I don't know why. He did, said the same thing to me. Like, and I'm just like, it was crazy. So then I became a teacher. Mm -hmm. And my I met a guy um, who ended up being like a long relationship. And I was telling him how I love teaching. It's my calling. It's like a thing for me. And he was like, why don't you, you ever thought about nursing? <laughs> wow. That's crazy. And I snapped. Like, I snapped. Like, it's the last time. Everybody. <laughs> it's literally not for everybody. It's, it's, it's like, not. why would you just try to make me be something because of, like, stability. Yeah, yeah. stability. Yeah. Like, I'm telling you, like, oh, I finally found my calling. I love it so much. Like, I've done mm -hmm. all these things. He's like, why didn't you try to be a nurse instead? <laughs> interesting, interesting. And I bet these were all men that probably cared about you and admired you. C cared about me, admired me, and, like, <laughs> were, were there for me. Me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, of course so, they want you to be a nurse. They're yeah, a nurse. Okay. yeah. Their nurse is crazy. <laughs> I was like, should I defend it or like? God, no. God, uh, <laughs> no, it's funny. It's funny because I know that nurses they do get paid very well. If that's something that is their calling, if that's something that you know they desire to do, I think that's great. But I know for a fact it's not for everybody. It's yeah, real. I can barely see a needle go into somebody's skin, you know, on a TV screen. Right. <laughs> let alone be working inside of a hospital. Right. And you so. shouldn't be doing it. If it's not. I'm not. You should. I mean, people do things that aren't their calling. We said yeah. it. But like, why would you want me to do something? Be like a nurse that yeah. I wasn't called to do. Now I'm just a nurse that don't even care to be there. And I'm miserable. <laughs> and Stop I'm miserable. It. You and know. Now I gotta tend to people. And I'm miserable, nice. and miserable. I hate it. So I might mess up. I might. Because I'm not even. Just not do that yeah, good. Yeah, that's the thing. And, yeah. and I'm a nurse now. <laughs> that, see, that is too much. And it's a lot of schooling and all that stuff. To, so to go through that, and if it's not for you, it's like. Mm. And for me to say, this is my career. I just figured it out. And then you to be like, start all over. Go to nursing school. <laughs> mm -mm. That's Yo, that's what people do. And it's like, I feel like um, a lot of people speak from their place of uh concern for you yeah or in a place of like i'm rooting for you and i want you to be okay because even like with my family as supportive as they are there's been jobs that they tell me to just take yeah and i'm like if i listened to everything that they said mm -hmm. i wouldn't have received the accolades or i wouldn't have accomplished the accomplishments that i have now yeah because i would have went the route that y'all told me now i might have mm -hmm. been in the, at that time more financially stable mm -hmm. so i might have been happier in that space mm -hmm. But I wouldn't have made the connection that I made. Yeah. I wouldn't have made the the TV placements that I've made, or I yeah. wouldn't have done it. And it's like, I hear you. Yeah. yeah. And, and but would, like, <laughs> yeah. And would you have been happier? Because in my opinion, you know, I've been financially secure, and that doesn't necessarily equal ha happiness. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if anything, I've probably been more happy being not financially secure. But I guess it's probably a little bit different for a woman. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, those things are not, they don't equal each other. They don't equal. Yeah. <sighs> they don't equal. I mean, like, for me, it's like the financial security. I Until I decide, like, once I start deciding to provide for things, the financial security becomes more of a head. But when that's, like, by myself, yeah. I'm like, yo, I'm trying to, like, yeah. live. I'm trying to figure it out. Figure like, it out. early 2017, I'm like, yo, I'm out here. I'll sleep in my car. I'll sleep in my friend's house, mm -hmm. on the couch. Mm -hmm. wow. I'm acting. I don't, like, I don't care about what nobody, I got to figure it out. Yeah. Wow. And then you'll be like, well, you should go get this warehouse job. And not that there aren't great jobs. Yeah. But it's like, I've seen my dad have warehouse jobs. Yeah. I've seen my cousins, my family. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it worked for them to a certain extent and i've also seen the wear and tear that it does on yeah the body in specific areas and yeah. i'm like well like that's also not what i want yeah yeah and this is what i want but i also know the sacrifice to have what i want and not everybody 
understands the internal sacrifice. Yeah. People yes. be like, I get there's a sacrifice, mm -hmm. but when you don't feel it, mm -hmm. it's like you don't really get it. Yeah. Because it's like I'm willing to sacrifice. Like yeah. you get it on a surface level of like, yeah, you got to sacrifice time, family, money, yeah. whatever it is. But it's like, but now I feel it. Yeah. If I don't sacrifice it, I ain't going to feel right. Yeah. And this is actually a really good segue from where for where we're about to go. So I was going to ask you guys what your career goals are. First, let's start there. What are your career goals? Career goals? Like your uh, ultimate uh, career goals. Ultimate, like, is, there's so many, and I feel like that is, that's either the ADHD in me <laughs> 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 or, the, or, the, or just being a natural creative. Yeah. But um, ultimately, like, I want to be the most versatile. I want to be in the conversation of the most versatile ever. Yeah. Like, I want to be as goofy and silly as Martin, mm -hmm. but I want to be very serious in the sense of, like, Denzel, mm -hmm. dynamic, and Leo, like, passionate, like Viola. I want to be in that that space mm -hmm. of, wow. of conversation as an actor. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's funny because I feel like nothing else really matters yeah, yeah. <laughs> instead of being in that conversation. But when I talk about, like, career-wise in the sense of, like, I, want, I would love to open up my own studio where I can help others mm -hmm. get to the next level because like for me there was no example right mm -hmm. like i didn't have family or friends that came before me doing this craft right. so like me having to figure it out i'm like dag i wish there was somebody that was just like yo this is how you go right this is the route this is the blueprint i went back to school to try to figure out things but i didn't have that so i would love to be that that person i'm like yo you're dope i can bring you on to my studio and i can help you get to where you're trying to go to right. with the mentorship and the coaching mm -hmm. and the access because the access is the name of the game. It's yeah. like you have access, you can do it. Right, right. And it's like I can give you the access so now you experience being in front of the camera. You know what it's like. You know how you know what it's like to mess up, to be nervous, to yeah. to have your flaws, to be vulnerable, mm -hmm. to be to not judge your character or yourself mm -hmm. and just be. Yeah. So like yeah. you know what that's like going into it. So when you get the opportunity, you're not folding. Yeah. Like for me, it was like I'm on like my opportunity came fresh out of college and it yeah. was like Pepsi commercial. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, bet. Pepsi. But it was I was nervous because I've never experienced something to that extent. So yeah. I'm like, I'm listening to director and I'm like, all right, get out my head, get out my head, get out my head. Yeah, I'm sure there's so much and imposter syndrome. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah that too. And I'm yeah. from from Little Town, Glasgow, little town, and yeah. I'm in LA. Like, yo, this is the back lot, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, so I mean, although it was a blessing, I feel like I was ready. I feel like preparing people yeah. is what I really want to do ultimately to receive what it is that they know that they have inside. Yeah. So that's like career goals. I would love to be in that space of having my, like 50 Cent has his studio now. Tyler Perry has a studio. There's not a lot of black owned mm -hmm. big yeah. studios. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I would love to have a studio and not have to run it, of course. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. like, I would love to be in that space as I, you know, ultimately get older and everything. Yeah. And I can film what I want. Now I got an idea. I'm like, I'm going to go to my lot. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to do my project. Or I'm yeah. going to do my homie script and yeah. do what I want to do. I love that. No, that's beautiful. How yes. about, for, yeah, I really love that. I love that. that too. I keep trying to s chime in on all that. <laughs> <laughs> like chime in. I'll be like that. I'll be like, should I say something? Should I say something? <laughs> No, just do your thing. It's so funny because you guys are giving such actor <laughs> vibes. We are. I'm like, oh, he's like, he's making me cry. I'm like, stop it. No, I love it, though. Eyes. Um, Well, um, first of all, so powerful. Mm -hmm. The people that you, you know, have a vision to compare yourself to, it, it moves me even just hearing that because I know that that is such a big, lofty goal. And I think, you know, I feel like as an act, actor, actresses, we all in some way, shape, or form struggle with that you know, imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. learning the craft, but then also imagining, you know, yourself being that person. So yeah. to even have that goal to compare yourself to those greats, I feel like is already, you Ooh, know, it's to me. lofty <laughs> and powerful <laughs> and empowering because I feel like there's, I see so many great talented actors at my school and they're like, oh, I shouldn't even say this. I shouldn't say this on camera. <laughs> 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 A lot of people are kind of like, um, afraid of their potential, intimidated of their potential, mm -hmm. ner you know, just not, uh, you know, struggle with that imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. we all do sometimes. Yeah. And so I think it's, it's empowerful to tell yourself, to compare yourself to those type of mm 
people because why not? Yeah. Why not? They're human. Yeah. We're human. Who's to say that you won't? And honestly, I know there's a lot of great money made in having your own studio and teaching people. So if you can get into that, yeah. I know that that is um, very lucrative. Something yeah, I thought of too. Listening, to, I'm sorry, Trey. Did I cut you off? Go nah, ahead. nah. I'm, I'm nope. just I'm in the mix. No, <laughs> <laughs> something I resonated with. Um, listening to you say that made me think of um, seeing is believing, right? So mm -hmm. like when you do come from like a small town and you haven't seen like your uncle become a famous actor or something, right. you know what I mean? It's very hard to like see yourself in those positions. So I think it's also beautiful that you do want to have a studio to grant access to these mm -hmm. people that may be coming from a space where you came, where it was just like they weren't able to 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 see it or understand it or know how to do it, and you can help them with that, like, so specifically because you really didn't have that either, At you know? All, like, our town is is sports. Yeah, that's like, it. And, I was, and, yeah. and rightfully so. <laughs> yeah. Because the talent that we have, but if you, like, every athlete that has been amazing in their sport mm -hmm. that I know of, that I'm friends with, mm -hmm. also are super talented yeah. in something else. Yeah. Or very creative. Mm -hmm make music yep. rap dance sing yep. whatever it is that they do but it's never fed yeah because where we're from it's like you either an athlete or you a bus yeah it's and shame, then yeah shameful. it's crazy and you're chasing this athletic buttons. life yeah <laughs> right? i was literally right. kind of just saying this to angel that like i was sad that i was a cheerleader and that i didn't play a real sport because i just felt like I like had good grades and all these things and I just was watching all my friends who were just like football players get all these full ride scholarships full to colleges ride. and I'm just over here like with my good grades like do 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 like, no that's fact <laughs> and I'm like to be or no, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying and I, and I ended up playing division two <laughs> basketball like, I ended up being an unrecruited walk one like I had a decent journey but it was just like nobody fed the or nurtured the craft of this besides like Praise dancing at church, yeah. <laughs> you know, a school play yeah. or something like that. Nobody really fed that. So we didn't have that opportunity. And I'm like, there's so many people who are talented in multiple things. And now with the avenue and the space, mm -hmm. all they need is the access and the understanding of the craft, like you said earlier. Mm -hmm. So they can do both. Yeah. <laughs> like you yeah. can do both. You can. No, that's beautiful. So with that being said, what are your ultimate career goals? Ah, uh, Like I said, you know. Did I prepare anything today? Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> My goals. I feel like they're they're different ones, right? Like I feel like I have you said career goals. So yeah. Right there. You know, I w I would love to be an actress. A famous actress would be nice, mm -hmm. right? I feel like I always try to focus on you know. You know the work. The process, yeah. moving the needle. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that sometimes I forget that there's even a goal at the end of it. Honestly, I, I kind of I feel like I'm just always climbing this mountain. I'm like, where am I going with this? Um, so ultimately, yes, I want I want to be an actor, an actor, actress, career I'm, businesswoman. Yeah, like I said, I just re recently enrolled in sales, so I see myself as a businesswoman. I see myself as a brand in the future. Yeah. yeah. I love. I think that's a very honest answer and like a vulnerable answer. I really like that because that's honestly I feel like where most of us are, where it's just like we have goals, but it's like we're just trying to. It's step by step, day by day. You know, like I'm just trying to make it through the day, okay? <laughs> like literally, like I'm pushing myself to even say one single word. You know, stop like, it. No, you it's are real. kidding. It's real. For real. It's like that's I am funny. just. I'm just trying to make it through the day, like 95% of the time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, so I wanted to talk about that because I wanted to see where your, what your life goals are mm -hmm. and where, like, how does it coincide? You know, okay. that's what I want to talk about. So what are your actual, like, ultimate life goals? Ultimate life goals. Um, I, to be honest, I just want, like, a kingdom that I, I want to feel like I – you know, not necessarily say the head of a kingdom, but I want to be like a crucial piece of my kingdom where I'm able to provide for like family and friends. Mm -hmm. That's like, I feel like life goals, I want to be able to do that where I'm not worried about health insurance for family members. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, necessarily worried about people being so lost in a place of not having their basic needs mm -hmm. for like family members and friends. And if I could create something that is the pinnacle of that mm -hmm. then that's all i really like i'm like that's what i want and i think that acting side um it's so healing because acting is so therapeutic because you're learning about perspective and you're learning about backstory and you're learning about 
the why somebody sits the way they sit. Why do they move the way they move? Why do they think or say the things they say? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. being able to express that and teach that, I think helps people learn themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's yes. helped me learn myself mm -hmm. in certain ways. And I'm still learning about myself in those ways as well. But I'm able to dive deep into a certain level of depth about person yeah. or about people. And I would love to be able to give that within my kingdom. So I just want to be yeah. able to provide that place, yeah. you know, with God first, obviously, but give that place with people where they're like, okay, I'm cool here. Yeah. Underneath of Trey's umbrella. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we good. My health is good. Mm, the yeah. knowledge, the access to lawyers, access to doctors, access to the, the things that, if I'm honest, like the black culture doesn't always have access to initially. Yeah, yeah, we have yeah. to gain <laughs> access to. So it's yeah. like if I can be a, a piece of that puzzle yeah. to make all the stuff come to, that's my life goals. And, you know, of course, I want to be able to be stable while I do that, where yeah. I'm like, I'm not working for anything either. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I feel like that comes with a lot of sacrifice and fight and struggle at first. Mm -hmm. But eventually when I pass on in that legacy of like some of you moves on, it's like, my kids is good. My grandkids is good. Their friends are good. Their mm -hmm. their wives or husbands are good based off of what, you know, I was blessed to start. Mm -hmm. That's life goals for me. Yeah, like, that's yeah. big. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's like such a big, <laughs> like, um, thing to take on. You know what I'm yeah, saying? It's, it's like, crazy. I'm crazy. I don't know what I mean. Like no, but I love it, though, because it's so <laughs> powerful. And it's like, it's actually like, it's so manly. Like, you know, on, that's, that's what I was, honestly, that's what I was thinking the whole yeah, time. Yeah. I think that's something that's been missing. Yeah. For, for some, for quite some time. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think that we've all gotten a little bit confused into thinking that the brands, the logos, mm -hmm. the cars, the flashy yeah. things, I think there's a lot of, you know, young boys and men that may feel like that is the ultimate goal, the woman, mm -hmm. the throwing money at wherever they want to throw it. Yep. And it's like, ultimately, is that being a man? Or is it <laughs> what the values that you that you mentioned? Right, right, right. No, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. That felt super manly. Like, I was just sitting here <laughs> thinking, like, it's so beautiful because I would never even dare to dream that big. But because I'm a woman, I don't feel like not that women can't be as powerful, but oh, I'm yeah. learning. Yeah, we yeah, we are in a different way. I think a lot of the time, too. Yes, for sure. But like, I think I'm learning to sometimes there are th certain things that we're not supposed to women are not supposed to be innately carrying around. Um, and I'm learning that and, th and listening to you say that it was just a real representation of that for me because I'm like. I don't want to do that, but maybe I could like um oh, not, that. <laughs> <laughs> not that. Not that. But maybe I could contribute to this in some way. I could teach the kids or something, you know. I'll be the other, <laughs> other puzzle piece. Girl. <laughs> the other puzzle piece. I the reason. <laughs> you don't have to do anything. Yeah. The Yo, oh my gosh, exactly. I had all the people that's here. They came out of me. <laughs> that's oh. crazy. All right. So how about you for your life goals? What are your life goals? You know, my mom, you know, it's not as, it's not as definitely not comparably uh, manly or lofty, right? <laughs> like, the first thing that came to my mind, to be honest, you know, I think about, you know, fitness and health. Yeah. <clears throat> I think about volunteering and being there for my family as well. Yeah. You know, I would like to have a family someday as well. And, you know, nurturing mm -hmm. that family, nurturing the people in your, your family, <clears throat> And also, you know, instilling the same types of values and morals that, you know, the next generation will be able to carry on while we're on the topic. Because I feel like a lot of these things do get lost. Yeah. And I, I would just want hope for in the future that when I do have a family and that when I do have kids that they have, you know, the right morals and principles and things to instill aspire to mm -hmm. in life as opposed to whatever they see online or what, whatever they find on their phone. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, I do. Because <coughs> you find stuff. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, that, that makes perfect sense. I always just like, it's just crazy because I just feel like I don't know what my blueprint was growing up, like what I wanted my life to look like. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And it's just like now that I'm like as an adult, I'm still trying to shape like what I want that to look like and like how it coincides with 
my like career goals. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just like mm-hmm. it's very difficult thing. It can be a difficult thing to do to try to manage both things because it's like you want to be able to be successful at what you're doing, but still being a mom and a wife to somebody at the same time, it's like mm-hmm. it presents many challenges. You know? Of course. And like I'm like working through that and learning through that as I get older, especially when you don't have um, a job or a dream that's like super just like a nurse like you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying like mm-hmm. not that nurses because nurses <laughs> work uh, their 12 hour shifts and stuff but you know they, then you know she's gonna have those four days off and you you know yeah. what i'm saying and it's just like even a teacher is just like you never know because now you're taking care of you know you have 22 kids you know and mm-hmm. it's like plus your kid that you have oh, at God. home and it's just like you never know what that's gonna look you like never, yeah now that's really? real there's no there's like the blueprint of like we talk about with nurses like you you know you're going to go to school yeah you know when you pass you get the, you get your job you have that specific and then we have careers in a way that it's just like it's what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, you know, yeah. it's like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going for this, but yeah. it can actually look like this. And I didn't even want it to look like that. So how am I even I know I want to get here. Yeah, <laughs> right. <It laughs> so, was, yeah, so I, I completely get it. Yeah, that unknown is, is, is crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. All right. So with such rare and um, big dreams, how do you stay motivated and hopeful? Uh. I think that my my prayer life is the is probably the biggest piece. Yeah. Um, and not that I do everything perfectly mm-hmm. or right, mm-hmm. but I know that I always have that. Yeah. So yes. that grounding is is the the base of you know the motivation and the continuation. Um, I learned that when I started acting to write down my reasons why mm-hmm. and put it in an envelope. And then put it away. Wow. So when I'm discouraged, mm-hmm. I can go back to that envelope I love that. and open it up mm-hmm. and re read mm-hmm. the reasons why. Yeah. So like you can kind of stick to, I, well, I can kind of stick to my why. Mm-hmm. So that keeps me motivated. Leaving my town keeps me motivated mm-hmm. because I get accustomed to it. Mm-hmm. So like me being able to leave and 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 learn the craft in a different area mm-hmm. or meet different people and and then come home bring it back to my town and learn from the people of my town that are doing the same things those keep me motivated and my friendship groups yeah i would say keep me motivated because i never want to be left behind yeah. so when my bro is i'm like yo you just did what yeah man right. and it's like a it's yes. a positive competition because uh-huh. some is negative yeah but i know i have certain friends where i'm like bro you just you you filmed a Nike commercial, bro. Mm. I gotta get in something, yes. or like you just graduated law school, bro. Yeah, yeah. I gotta do something. Mm. So it's like those core people who have ambitions. Yeah, yes. I think are important to be surrounded by because you don't want to be the one that's like, well, you know, shit. I ain't, you know. We need <laughs> to clip this. Can we <laughs> stop it. Literally, Ryan. <laughs> we need to timestamp this because literally, me and Ryan just talked about this on a podcast. That'll be coming out actually after this one mm-hmm. about how people just have a hard time. Oftentimes people have a hard time like using it as a friendly competition thing mm-hmm. and they turn it into a negative thing. Oh my gosh, the worst. And it's just like, no, like this is how you should handle your friends doing good. You know, like you want to meet them where they're at. Like you want to get, oh, yo, y'all just got that. Okay. Oh, I got to work to get mine. You know what I'm you saying? Feel me. It's like, and everybody's journey is their own. Not that you're going to be, like, if your friend just bought a Rolls Royce and that's just not something that's an, an ambition for you, right, right, then right. it's like you're not going to buy a Rolls Royce because your friend bought a Rolls Royce, you know? Mm-hmm. But if your friend just got a big promotion, right, and you're an actor, you want to book your next role. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right, like, why right. wouldn't you just use that as healthy competition opposed to hating? Yes. Hating. I, I, <laughs> Listen, I agree with you a hundred percent. Like, listen, in my acting school, I don't, I I know there's some things I can say and some things I probably shouldn't. But in acting school, I think there, there's some competition. Yeah. Because we have talented people in art school. And, um, you know, I see people and I will get inspired. Mm -hmm. Just like you said. Mm -hmm. You know, I see people making progress, even people that I may have never thought probably would have made progress Mm -hmm. you know things change (laughs) it's not over until it's over yeah and when i see that i realize like wow it's inspiring to me it's cool it's it's motivating it's all of those things and i feel like you know that is much more powering than hating yeah so i don't know why people 
do that either. It's, it's like so such <laughs> it's such but a weak emotion. It's a small town mentality. It is. Yes. And I, I think that like even I've seen it, which is very interesting because I feel like our town mm -hmm. is very progressive mm -hmm. in a sense of support. Yeah. But I also feel like our town was the same way. Be, but we all played, when I related to sports mm -hmm. and be a competitor, we all played the same positions. Yeah. So we, I had to be better than you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In order to get playing time. Or yeah. I had to be older than you in order to get playing time. Mm -hmm. And we're taught that young. Mm -hmm. And I'm also, I also remember, like, me, like, I went to private schools in the very beginning of my life before I transferred to public school. Mm -hmm. And there was probably, like, three to five black men or black people mm -hmm. and i remember being taught like you can't be the same mm -hmm. as the other black men you have to be mm -hmm. at a higher level of your education or because they're only choosing yeah one, one or two ooh. so it's like that mm -hmm. mentality tends to get you know come over to us and as an adult yeah and then you're hating on accident mm -hmm. where you like nah I, I gotta beat him or I, I gotta be better than him or i gotta I want him to win, right. but not if I don't win. Right. And you learn over time and meeting the right people and brothers mm -hmm. or like sisters. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just like, yo, we both can, both can be true. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, we both can be good. It's enough <laughs> for us to all eat out here. You know? 100%. Yeah. I like, agree. it's crazy. And people just, I don't, I don't know. And everyone's journey is their own also, right? Like one thing that also resonated me, with me that you said, uh, Randolph, is that, um, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, sure, hand <laughs> up. Um, is that the prayer thing? Like, obviously, mm -hmm. like, my relationship with, with God is just, like, I need it. Like, I can't, like, mm -hmm. make any decisions without, like, being rooted in that relationship with God. And in knowing God, I know that, like, my journey, my steps are ordered, right? right my right. journey is my journey, like, regardless. And I think that when, if people could, like, wrap their minds up around that and, like, share that perspective, mm -hmm. it would help them to not be haters. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> be free. And, like, you'll yeah, be, you be free from hating on me because... The truth will set you free. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like, you're going to get what you're supposed to get regardless. Mm -hmm. it, me getting what I'm going to get, don't have nothing to do with what you're going to get. You know what I mean? And people just... I don't know. They don't look yeah. at it that way. Your own personal journey. You're everyone. We all have our own journey. It's so yeah. weird. So how do you stay motivated? You know, it, it's so funny. Mine's was almost identical to yours because the first thing that the three things that initially popped in my mind, and I added one more after hearing yours, was the art, mm -hmm. the community, and the prayer. Mm -hmm. I feel like the art. Oh my gosh, I had no idea the impact that the art will have on me. Mm -hmm. I really didn't. I just thought, oh, being an actress is being cute and looking good on camera and remembering your lines right. and then when I got into it I was like wow this is beautiful mm -hmm. you know I read plays that will bring me to tears I watch performances that'll bring me to tears and I honestly feel like it changed my life in almost every way mm -hmm. because I feel like I see the world differently mm -hmm. I understand people differently I can navigate things you know in a in a way that just kind of helps me to realize like you know, maybe I'll have another job or another career, or, you know, I'll build a, a business or a brand, mm -hmm. but what would it all really mean right. at the end of the day if I'm not, you know, happy, if it's right. not meaningful to me? And that's why I feel like the art is empowering because that did something to me that I didn't imagine that it, it would. And so the art first will definitely keep me motivated. And then community. Again, like you said, seeing other people doing well and realizing, okay, we're all on a journey. We're all, you know, moving yeah. forward, mm -hmm. inspiring each other, and definitely prayer. Mm -hmm. um, because I think at the end of the day, you know, a lot of times it can be lonely. Even though yeah. I do have some support, probably not as much as <laughs> film, <laughs> probably not as much film crew support as your family just yet. Right. But I feel like it can get lonely choosing this um, sort of path and, and lifestyle. And, um, and I'm sure this is probably another question that we'll get to later on. But, you know, people view you differently mm -hmm. yeah. based on your choices. Or maybe they they might assume the worst. They don't know you're happy just reading plays. They don't know. They don't relate to that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? yeah. So it's like the prayer is something that is empowering because you know that, you know, God brought that into your life for a reason yeah and then the last thing i was going to add was competition i think goes along with the community mm -hmm. because you know when you have people in your circle that are doing well doing really well you know sometimes you may look at it like 
oh, goodness, my best friend and my god brother just bought a half a million dollar house. I'm like, ooh, I don't know if I'm even remotely close uh -huh. to that um, yet, yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, it's special. Yeah. It's special because it shows you that anything is po possible. Oh, my gosh. Anything right. and more. And don't you want to go to that half million dollar home right. and have barbecues um, and parties? Spending the night. And, exactly. <laughs> right? <laughs> Listen, I probably need a place to stay. Yeah, for real. Literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> <laughs> literally like i literally have had that situation it's so crazy that has happened to me where my literally my best friend and my cousin are a couple and they bought a half million dollar home and i watch i watch people Both. hate on them like and mm. people with Both. homes but just not as homes as big and beautiful as theirs mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and i watch them distance themselves and be weird and i'm like why would you want to do that i want to go to that half million dollar home you know what i'm Both. saying Acting like up. yeah missing a blessing like <laughs> That be the thing, like you missing your blessings by being a hater. Right, like right. it's just so crazy. That just blows my mind. All right, so I want to talk about. You were talking about the art. I, that's a, a question that's very interesting to me. Like, how do you keep your mental health? I think first of all, just in being an actor and the uncertainty of it, and the constant like, um, like just trying to do the best you can possibly do. Like you're in school, you're studying, like the, uh, you guys were just talking about the um, auditions that you have to go on and the nose and things like that. So I think it, with that, how do you keep your mental health healthy, you know? And then also like having to, you know, have these emotions from being an actor, how do you keep your mental health healthy? You know Good what question. I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like wanna, yeah, okay. go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um, so recently, <clears throat> I've always loved running. That was the one sport that I did throughout life. I ran track for about 10 years. But it sounds so simple, but recently I discovered walking. And I feel like getting my 10K or 15K steps a day, it just feels so relaxing, powerful, renewing for I, me. I totally agree. You know, sometimes I don't listen to music. 100% of the times I'm by myself. I feel like it's just to move your body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it really changes. I feel like it's so simple. I don't realize how simple my answers are, but they're no, all kind of simple. No, it's a really good answer. Yeah. I love walking, and I feel like that just helps me reset and renew. And, you know, I, I get ideas, and, you know, I just see the beauty of life. Mm -hmm. I realize that, you know, Beautiful things and experiences can be free when yeah. I'm walking. Mm -hmm. And I just feel happy doing that. I feel like I had something else to say. What was the question? It was just how do you keep oh. your mental health, you yeah. know, intact? Yeah. And then um, the other thing is the emotional work that goes into acting. Honestly, I feel like I kind of have, I don't know if recluded is the right word, but I feel like I took a step away from a lot of the going out. Mm-hmm. The partying, the, you know, bar or club atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that has helped me a lot because a lot of energy goes into mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like pulling away from that energy and just putting it into my craft, relaxation and improving myself has helped me um, make my journey more straight and narrow mm -hmm. as opposed to a lot of, you know, zigzags yeah. and um, side stories. Yeah. So those are like the simple things that helped me. And then I feel like, you know, it's just looking inward mm -hmm. and just taking a step back. I love these answers because they're very tangible. You know, mm -hmm. like those are easy things for people to do. And people don't realize how I've been walking, too. And people do not realize how much like just moving your body like changes things, you know, like. I used to always like have to remind myself like action beats anxiety, right? So yeah. it's just like, you know, when you're yeah. stuck in that like analysis paralysis of it all, right? And you're mm -hmm. just sitting there overthinking and having all this anxiety, like just get up and move. <laughs> like, yes, you know, 100%. like just get up and move. So I love those. I love those tips. Those are really good tips for anyone keeping their mental health together, even if it's not in acting or, you know, what have you. Mm -hmm. How about you? Yeah, I would say, you know, it's pretty much the same, like going – or walk or, yeah. or being active. I know uh, basketball was something that, you know, I, I feel like I always resort to. Yeah. I might want to go just shoot around. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. so I can clear my mind because that's where my mind is probably the most silent. Mm -hmm. Unless it's like, you know, doing meditation or something like that. It's like I'm actually like at peace. Mm -hmm. But I know I tore my meniscus Ooh, a while no. ago and I had to like, oh, God. chill. Right. <laughs> and I, <laughs> that's crazy. And I had to chill. Getting older. 
You better warm those legs up. But I know, right? <laughs> right, 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 right. You better oh. stretch next time. <laughs> Facts. Facts. So, um, not y'all calling me old. It's crazy. I'm just saying, no, I'm, just like, I'm just saying, as we get older, as we get older it's, you start to realize, like, dang, I'm yeah. not as, like. For real. And that's, what's bad is I don't know how I did it. I just was like, what's going on here? Oh, wow. But um, to, to say to find my mental peace when that aspect was kind of taken mm-hmm. away in a certain way was kind of like, you know, accomplishing, mm-hmm. just doing something, uh, making the bed in the morning. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yes. something happened. Like, I did, I did something. Yeah. Because a lot of times, like, that depression state, you just be like, well, you know, I'm here. Nothing. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm, I'm so Ooh. glad you mentioned that because I was going to say the same thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. I, feel like as a, I don't know if you experience this, but I feel like sometimes as an artist, like, we, I'm not going to say we experience depression more. I'm not going to say that. Mm-hmm. But what I will say is that the lifestyle is just different in, mm-hmm. in so many ways. Mm-hmm. Like to bring, like you with you with your writing and your production, to bring your work and to put it on paper and to share it with other people yeah. and to build. I feel like there's a certain, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, like a process that you have to go through to bring what's in you out of mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. and i feel like a lot of times like the greatest artists of all times like they weren't the cool kid in school mm-hmm. they mm-hmm. weren't popular they weren't you know famous until after they died right a mm-hmm. lot of times they were the outcasts mm-hmm. the rebels the unusual person you know like the people that the person that people just thought were kind of like a standout or yeah. overlooked mm-hmm. and no one expects that you're going to be denzel washington <laughs> yeah, or whatever right. the case may right. be later on right 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 um but yeah i feel like there is a certain sadness um that can come with that yeah. sometimes it's real i think and i don't know if did i cut you off because i don't want to cut you, you off but i feel like sitting with the feeling like as as artists not that that people who aren't artists, I think there's an artistry in every person. Mm-hmm. But as an artist that expresses it and, you know, communicates it, mm-hmm. you sit with the feeling a lot of times longer than what you absolutely have to. Yeah. So you're, because you're trying to like analyze it and you're trying to understand it and you're trying to figure it out. Then you're trying to think of creative ways and you're trying to do all these different things. And it's almost like a gift and a curse. I've been like, and not to make it like dark or sad, but I've been to like funerals before where like I've lost family members and my mind has gone to the feeling of like, where does this resonate in my, like, as I'm like crying, I'm like, Oh shoot, well, it resonates right here. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'm in my head as like, what it does as an actor, what my body now communicates. And I'm like, I don't know if that's a gift or a curse or both, Yeah. but dealing with that now, I'm not necessarily just dealing with the fact of the death. I'm dealing with the fact that I think something's wrong with me because I'm dealing, I'm thinking about both of these things and I'm, yeah. and I'm processing these things. So it's like, okay, I think we as artists tend to sit with so much, mm-hmm. whether if it's pain, mm-hmm. Even if we overanalyze it just yes. to be relatable to the person that had to deal with it on times 10. Mm-hmm. So now the words that are being said or the expression that we have is now relating to the person that actually experienced what we are just reading on script. Mm. And they're like, yo, that changed my life, that performance or whatever it is. I felt that and I, and I understand it. And it's like, dang, like I only know it from the paper mm-hmm. and my research. Mm-hmm. You experienced this, but I sat with this to try my best to be right. true to and honest to what's on paper. And I think we as artists tend to kind of tap into that space. So that's why that depression feels so heavy on us sometimes where it's like, yo, you just got a no. Like, you, it's not that bad, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. But we're like, nah, but the agony. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, we're here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All that rejection is a lot, though. It's heavy. It's, it's a heavy. lot. Like, that's a lot. Yeah. Like, people don't put themselves in scenarios to be rejected like that, like, so yeah. often. You know what I'm saying? Like, people aren't, that's why people cho- choose a regular job. That's why you're a nurse, right? So right. that you don't have to, like, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. deal with that. That's a lot to deal with. Like, yeah, so, real. ooh, I could just, ooh, oh, everything you were just saying was so deep. Like, <laughs> very, I could very. totally see how it could be hard for an actor to keep their mental state, like, in order. You know what I mean? So that's crazy. But one thing that you said that I thought was very tangible, and I like to pull out the tangible things for people because, Sometimes it's like someone gives you advice and you're like, but what does that look like? <laughs> like, you yeah. know, but what I heard you say is that um, celebrate the small wins pretty much. Right. Like yeah. me making my bed today. I got up. I made my bed. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that is actually a small win. Like I'm moving in the right direction. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. like you have to celebrate even the smallest of things. Um, yeah. All right. So as we're coming to a, a close, 
I have a really um, the, a fun question. So, how is dating as an a aspiring actor? Uh, Bro, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Interesting. So, honestly, I'm not sure where to start with dating, where to begin. <laughs> um, recently, I have taken a break because in the past, mm-hmm. previously, I have dabbled in the whole dating apps, mm-hmm. online dating culture. Mm-hmm. And now at this stage, I'm like, it doesn't make sense for me. Yeah. It's not something that probably will ever make sense again in the future. I think I realized certain things about dating apps that just um, I just can't, you know, just don't sit right with me. Like for one one thing, for example, and I don't want to segue too far into dating apps, but, <laughs> but I, do, I am curious yeah. though. <laughs> <laughs> one thing, Intrigued. for example, <laughs> like... So it's a platform yeah. that allows people to have access to you. Yeah. That probably in a real life scenario may not have enough interest to approach you, mm-hmm. may not have enough confidence to approach you, mm-hmm. may not, um, you know, even have like the time, energy, or real genuine interest to approach you, right? Mm -hmm. But through this dating app, it's like you have access to all these people, so it's super easy for you to just put everybody in the same category and decide that you want to message people. Now, I do realize as, you know, a woman, especially an attractive woman, there are some quote-unquote advantages to being on a dating app because, you know, you can connect with people, but I think the quality of those connections are so low Mm -hmm. in comparison to real life Mm -hmm. that it's just not worth it. And I feel like in real life, if someone says something to me, then I I can see, especially as an actress now, I can see what their intentions are. I can see their interest level. I can see, you know, that they actually made a decision to say something to me in person, which I think is a big huge difference from just sending somebody something yeah through a text right. and online that's interesting it's great. It's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 no that's very interesting I, I like that take we i should we should clip that too yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so i guess i'll get into i got off of those and i honestly have taken a, a little bit of a, a break um yeah. from dating and, and all of those things i feel like now at, at this stage you know, if something happens or I meet someone, you know, in person or through friends or through connections, that would be nice. Mm-hmm. But I'm no longer seeking or worrying or even desiring any sort of I uh, love that. relationship. I love that. And I, I, I love a referral. Peaceful. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does sound peaceful. Um, I love a referral. I always say that. Like, I think a referral is nice. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, yes. I think the best way to meet somebody is through somebody else, True. you know? I agree. All right, Edited. so Edited. tell me what you got going on. What I got going, I th- I think dating as an oh as god, an <laughs> <laughs> dating as an artist or an actor is, I mean, I think it depends on your mental space as a human. But yeah. like when I think younger me in the beginning of my career, and I'm like, oh, you're on Amazon or you're in a commercial or something like that. Dating was like. Well, you know, you see me. Mm. <laughs> oh. What's up? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And, and like, it's, it's, it's up. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, right. So, so it's like people talk to you differently. Yeah, like they're yeah. talking to you nicely. Yeah. You're like, well, you know. Talk to me nice. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> like, and, then, and then as your, you know, as your values and your desires change, the, the value of understanding in dating is so heavy because, again, as an actor, as an artist, being taught to understand backstory and fall in love with backstory the desire to have your backstory or your reasons why to be understood or felt is so high that sometimes it can cause a friction within a relationship like Mm -hmm. a real relationship because it's like this is what i want and you feel it so deeply Mm -hmm. where the other person might be like i didn't even think to think of it that deep Mm -hmm. like Uh, it's like that that, is a big thing (laughs) you know so it's like i just was chilling like i didn't now you got them in the world and you're in the world and you're just like so like dating as an artist or as an actor is such a it's a roller coaster it can be fun Mm -hmm. but it can be stressful and then you just need your mental space like like peace like me i gotta isolate yeah in dating because i have to be like yo i gotta go by myself yeah because i'm gonna carry your thoughts Mm -hmm. or i'm gonna carry your ambitions or i'm gonna carry your wants and your desires Mm -hmm. and i'm not gonna do what i gotta do yeah yeah because i'm gonna care more about yours yeah yeah so it's like if i don't 
you know, I got to get on the road. Like Drake, yeah. that song, he was like, I got to get on the road. Like, but it's like, I get it, bro. Yeah. Like, I got to get on the road. Yeah. So, like, dating is, is just, it's a roller coaster. Like I said, like, it depends on where your mental space is in this area. Like, it can, can be the really best thing ever or a headache. Yeah, no, <laughs> I can sure. relate to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So much. That makes sense, yeah. though. Because I feel like in some ways, you know, I don't know if you can relate to this or not, but I feel like in some ways you can almost kind of see the unseen. And that is a challenge because mm -hmm. you either have to, and this is a little complicated, but you either have to date someone that has a higher level of intellect or understanding mm -hmm. that's comparable to yours as an artist, mm -hmm. or you're just going to find yourself just kind of being, like you said, maybe brought down, maybe like distracted, maybe just feeling like you're just wasting too much mental space mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on something that is not like uplifting and then what is it worth at that point better to you know date someone that can match your energy that the two you know the iron can sharpen the iron and mm -hmm. the two are you know positive and focused on you know what they have like going on and that those that can I feel like two people in a relationship can propel each other in that way mm -hmm. as opposed to feeling like you know, if there's a challenge or there's an issue or there's always something that's a challenge or an yeah. issue, you know? Yeah. Would you guys rather date another actor or no? Um, let me answer. <laughs> yeah, you go I first. Don't, I, I don't think, it, like, uh, I've dated actors and I... And it's, and it's cool because I think the understanding is Haram. there. I also think that <laughs> it's, it's sometimes things are a little dramatic. <laughs> so, oh, I'm sure. So like sometimes I'm a, like it's dramatic yeah, dating so me. Some, yeah, you know. And like as a, and as a man, if I'm tapping into whatever I feel, yeah. and I'm like, nah, but I feel like this too. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. And it's like, and a, and a lady, she's feeling how she feels, and yeah. and if we're both like, well, I feel. Yeah, <laughs> the feeling. Yeah, it's like, oh, we love this. <laughs> this is, it can be heavy. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes you know, as an artist. You need somebody who's a little more practical, who, yes. who understands it. But you need somebody who understands your journey. Yeah. Because I can be in a film mm -hmm. with somebody who I am, you know, in love with mm -hmm. in that film. And I'm making myself vulnerable, although it's a job. Mm -hmm. Like, because people get caught up in it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you work with, like, actors, models, dancers, oh everything. But the most beautiful. Oh quote God. unquote the most beautiful yeah like, yeah you know? yeah so you're like you're working with them so you have to you know at a business mindset this is business yeah mm -hmm. but you're also being like i want to be honest and real in the moment mm -hmm. so you're allowing your emotions to be open to somebody else and you can you get to know that person of course and it's real it's it's real to like an extent of like mm -hmm. dad well i do develop like a, a real like care for you yeah because like now i i get it and you let me inside yeah yeah so like Whoever you're with, mm -hmm. gotta be like understanding that <laughs> pretty <laughs> much, yeah. And that's like, why at this stage, it definitely is a little bit easier to be like single. Single, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's a little yeah. Bit easier because, yeah, that's insane. Yeah, I just somebody heavy. having a <laughs> it's heavy. Yeah. You, you just get cussed like, out. You yeah, like, I, was, I was acting. I ain't. <laughs> 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 you do that with me. I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't know. <laughs> I, didn't know. <laughs> I was in the moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that seems very difficult. It's a thing. It's do you find thing. it difficult also dating in? LA yeah yeah LA is LA is a Hurrah! wild place <laughs> yeah LA is a wild place and people I've never met like I'm, I'm again we from here yeah there's a certain structure yeah and and I've never met so many open people mm -hmm. until I went to LA mm. and then as you get older you realize everybody a little more open okay. but like when I went in uh, yeah open it's crazy I was I was in LA like oh this is uh -huh. what you like Mm. I, like I would have never thought in my life. Mm -hmm. that Haram. Not, What's an example? Yeah, I know. I was about to. Uh, I was about to <laughs> say. I've Haram. been there and I've met LA people and, and all that, but I'm sure not in the actor space. So I'm curious. Uh, that's funny. I feel like it's uh, now. It's like damn. Because <laughs> you about to. What kink you been shame. through, bro? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, and I was like, I don't want to kink shame ever. <laughs> but it's like I don't think I was exposed to kinks until yeah. I went to Los Angeles. Yeah. Oh, that's what and, I'm asking you and for dealt the with, like, It's a question. And, and, <laughs> <laughs> bro killing me but i don't think i was exposed to it until i went out there and started dating yeah and then uh, and then when i was sexual kinks we want to hear the sexual answer kinks. to this question yes, i would say sexual kinks oh. and i would say also just like what people like i'm very uh 
old fashioned is what I would yeah. assume that I was I raised that. like. Yeah. So it was like my mom, my mom, my dad. This, this it. Yeah. I went to LA. It was like, oh yeah, I got you no know, poly. Uh-huh. World was different. Yeah. And it's open. Everybody yeah. is in it, and they're not hiding. Oh. Home was like. If somebody was into it, ain't nobody talk about it. Yeah, Haram. oh, definitely. So it was like throuples. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't like. But that's I wasn't happening. Aware no one's that. talking about it's, it. It's happening. It's no one's talking about it. And I'm not, you know, <sighs> blaming or shaming anybody. What you like, what you like, and I'm cool with that. Yeah. But I, don't, I think that like going to LA and dating, I was my eyes was open to it, and I was like, oh, this is a thing. It was a culture shock. I should yeah. say it was a culture shock it for is me. Damn and, <laughs> <laughs> you know, crazy. But, um, it was a it was a culture shock and i think that um dating is like you have to understand the culture of los angeles in a way of like we're a little more aggressive here mm-hmm. and more straightforward mm-hmm. and the california lifestyle is a lot more passive mm-hmm. it's more in industry passive we like you in your face and hate you mm-hmm. behind your back and i think the, uh-huh. the best example that i could say was um like if we're home, mm-hmm. people are like, "Yo, you, your car, your um, your tire popped. Oh, I can help you. Don't know how to change a car, dummy. Let me change it." Mm-hmm. We're out there. It's like, "Oh, I empathize with you. Don't know how to change a tire. That's crazy. I got something to do." And oh my god! <laughs> and nobody will help Haram. you. So, so dating in that world, it's like, what can you do for me? Yeah, yeah. And not necessarily like straight up, like, "Oh, this is love." And I'm not saying that people don't find that there, mm-hmm. but I'm saying that's what it was like, super artificial. Like mm-hmm. you don't look the part. You don't have. You not fly enough. You mm-hmm. not where people was like, "Yo, like you know how to fix the the stove? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bet mm-hmm. that's a win." Yeah, you yeah. Don't, care, don't care what you wearing. You go yeah. out there, they be like, "What kind of shirt is that?" <laughs> no. You'd be like, oh, that's crazy. That and is now you're crazy. like, it's more of like a clout. It's, yes, it's, it, 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 that's thing. what I, and that's what Haram. I felt. Mm-hmm. Like, I think I gravitated more towards people who weren't from Los Angeles, mm-hmm. who were going out there. Like, I met a lot of people from my hometown. Mm-hmm. And not to clown Los Angeles, because I absolutely love living out there. Like, I, I love the energy, the creative energy, the, mm-hmm. the go move. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to, to, like, you know, throw dirt or shade, but mm-hmm. the dating aspect was very much like, that and the option pool was very heavy mm-hmm. where it was like everybody's beautiful mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. it's like you you're focused you mm-hmm. gotta be focused yeah, like, yeah. Cause everybody's beautiful and you <laughs> yeah. work with everybody and you're like well this is amazing out here yeah so like how do to, i even hone in on how do i hone in <laughs> like how do i hone in and the personalities like what everybody's a creative everybody's yeah. or everybody know like everybody gets you yeah wow and it's like you get me mm-hmm. and then you leave that person the other person's like yeah you get me too yeah, yeah. Y'all everybody all gets get you like, that's why everybody's poly <laughs> i know everybody's and getting each other everybody, i'm screaming <laughs> everyone just loves each other everybody loving <laughs> <laughs> that's so interesting so, it was culture shock oh i like the Different. take okay all right so i'm gonna ask you guys the last question that i ask everybody on the podcast mm-hmm. and it's what do you want to say for the record it could be anything. It could have mm. something to do with this. It could just be something that you want to say, something that you have on your heart, what have you. But it's just, what do you want to say for the record? I'll let you go. Okay, so <clears throat> what I will say for the record is, you know, whatever burning instinct that you have inside of you, I'm go- first I'm going to go with instinct. He knows what I mean. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have a feeling, sometimes, you know, I think they said that God whispers. Mm-hmm. He doesn't shout. Mm-hmm. So if you have any sort of feeling that you want to try something, you want to do something, just give it a try. Mm. Because you never know what kind of door it will open for you in your life, mm-hmm. in your heart, in your passion, and just your lifestyle. Um, give it a try. I love that. <laughs> I really love that. That was a beautiful for the record. Yeah, that was that was great. That was good. Um, now you gotta follow it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Should have went first. <laughs> you threw me the Calm ooh. <laughs> nah. Um. I think for the record, I, I would just say like, pay attention to what's happening, mm-hmm. because there's so much that's going on in the world, and we can get so lost mm-hmm. that you know. Um, in a selfish way, pay attention because I got some stuff coming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but okay. in but in a way of just life, of seeing like paying attention to your surroundings, be sure you know, and and you know figure out what's important to you mm-hmm. because that is the only thing that you can truly protect mm-hmm. yeah. and be around because what's happening out here is crazy, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I don't like and I don't I don't have an understanding of it at all. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, what I can gravitate to and i can hold on to i'm like i gotta hold on to that dearly yeah 
Yeah. Because that's the only thing that truly matters is that love and that community that you have. So it's like pay attention to that. Be self-aware. Mm -hmm. Be aware of life for the record. And watch what I got coming because I got some heat coming. I love okay. that. Actually, <laughs> tell them where you can find it. Uh, well, on, um, well, on all social medias, Randolph Samuel, just straight through. Mm -hmm. um, I spell R-A-N-D-O-L-P-H-S-U-M-M-I-E-L. -M -M -E mm -hmm. Straight through. Website, RandolphSamuel.com. And on TV, like, you're going to see. So, like, just, just pay attention. Perfect. I'm so <laughs> okay. excited. I'm yes. so excited. Yeah. Angel, tell I, them where to find you. Okay. You can find me. My name is Angel Golfin. Um, Angel Della on Instagram, YouTube, IMDb, and, you know, I'm going to say Instagram twice. Mm -hmm. Primarily there. Hit <laughs> me up. <laughs> Like Perfect. No, beautiful, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for this. This was so artsy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, beautiful. And yeah, it felt such like an artsy actory <laughs> pod, and I love that. I really like it. It was good. It was different for uh, for the record. I like this episode. Thank authentic. you for having us, Tom. Yes, yeah, I think it'll you. be a lot of good clips from this episode, too, because right. you guys had some, like, really good points and i like that so thank you so much for coming i want you both to please come back Absolutely. yeah for sure so thank you all for watching listening liking sharing following telling people about for the record podcast if you haven't already subscribe to talk to me nice podcast network of course shout out to my guy ryan who's been Gross. here all 44 <laughs> episodes with me every single one actually all 45 episodes at this point and hey this is episode 44 of for the record podcast and we are out